prettiest sight in the whole world, ain't it? Yeah, that's what you said about that third steak you had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> hey, what's he doing? That ain't no he. Ain't but one rider in the territory can ride like that. That's a he. It's that Laughlin young man. Think she's in trouble? More than likely, knowing her, she's probably got somebody else in trouble. Hey, here's what she's after. She's got a wild one going. She's gonna have a deuce of a time kissing him on that nag she's on. Bring me on to help her? Come on, let's go. Wouldn't you say I was a height and brass horse, considering you happen to be on our property, dear? It doesn't make any difference. He's wild and you know it. I started chasing him up in the hills. It ain't my fault he ran onto your property. Are you kidding? Now, what chance do you think you would have had of getting him if Horse and I hadn't helped you catch him? <laughs> Get your rope off or I'll... Or I'll cut it off. And if you give me any more trouble, I'll lop off your ears. Joe, I believe I'd go along with her. You'd look funny without them two ears. <laughs> All right, simmer down. We're just kidding. It's your horse. I got to admit, I envy you. It's a fine-looking animal. <laughs> hey, we might be able to make a little deal on him once you get him saddled, bro. He ain't for sale to you or to anyone else. Now, get your rope off. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Anytime, ma'am. She wouldn't sell a horse. She and her old man in the horse business, ain't they? Uh, she's gonna have to sell that horse whether she wants to or not. Where her old man is. I reckon you'd let her keep a lame cow if you got a dime for it. Yeah, let's get on. Somebody's got you betting on that, that Chinese lottery again. No, 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 no. I done lost enough money on that, Joe. No, we're betting on the annual stake race. You're betting on the annual stake race? Yeah. That's, uh, that's my name. I'm, I, I'm in the stake race, you know, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're both betting on the stake race, that means one of you is betting against me. Hopsink bet on you last two years, little Joe. Both time lose shirt. This year, bet on Tommy T. Tommy T. Well, I'm... Glad to see there's one member of the family who's loyal. Yeah, well, Joe, as a matter of fact, see, I'm a little short on shirts myself, so I... <laughs> I bet on Flasher. <laughs> Don't be too disappointed, Joe. I'll bet on you. I might even go as high as five dollars. Hop Singh, will you please get the food yes. here? I promised Bill Porter I'd stop by his place this morning and see that bull he had shipped down for morning. Hey, I'll go along with you. I'd kind of like to stop off at the Laughlin place, take a look at that horse we helped Trudy catch. Oh, yeah. You two have been talking about that horse so much, I'd like to see myself. Hey, I'm saying, hurry up, will you? You're slower than Tommy T. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Cartwright, come on in. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. <laughs> Father around? Uh, he's out in the barn. I'll, uh, I'll go get him. Oh, thanks. Oh, what do you want to see him about? Uh, about that horse we helped you catch. We'd like to make your pa an offer on it. Well, he ain't for sale. I told you that. Oh, well, boys tell me that he's an awfully good horse. Animals like that are hard to come by. You should be able to get a good price for him. He ain't for sale. The horse is mine. Trudy! Now, my pa don't know about it. How are you, sir? Laughlin? Ain't often my good neighbors of card rides come to call. Join me in a drink? Uh, thank you, sir. No, no, thank you. I just drove by for a moment. Now, what can I do for you? Well, we came by to see if you had any horses for sale, but uh, I see your corral is empty. Well, right now, maybe. I got big plans, Mr. Cartwright. One of these days, Trudy and me are gonna catch us a whole pass of the wild ones. As a matter of fact, I was just studying on where I was gonna build me a corral to hold them. I'll uh, show you where I've been figuring on putting it. If you mind, I'd appreciate your suggestions. Uh. Um, I guess I gotta thank you for not giving me away. Forget it. Look, you got that horse hit out somewhere, and that's none of my business, but... You know, your pa's gonna find out about it sooner or later. Oh, no, he won't. Not where I got him hit. I got him up at the far end of Lone Pine Canyon. Pa doesn't go up that far. You know it's been since Ma died. Yeah, your pa hasn't done so well lately, has he? Ain't his fault. Got real sick after Mom died. Hasn't been able to work like he used to. See, I gotta help him, Joe. That's why I got that horse head out. Want to keep him for breeding stock. Get a real fine horse ranch for Pa. Surely you can't do it all by yourself. Yes, I can. Catch a few wild mares. Ain't never seen a horse like my Baronka. That's what I named him. Yeah, that's a good name. Got him saddle broke already, and I tell you, he's the fastest horse anywhere. Maybe I'll have to wait for that ranch. If you can have it right now, look at this. It's a stake race, thousand dollar prize. Rock is as fast as we think he is. Why not enter him? I think I could. You got nothing to lose. Think about it. I'll see. You. Trudy! If you've been doing your job right, I'd have had some nags to sell them card rights. Get some horses? Well, I hope you're luckier today or something. Sure been acting funny lately. Well, you don't seem to care much that your old pony got as much as the price of a jug to ease his misery. Everything's gonna be different, Pa. You just gotta believe me. I, I know it is. Oh, sure. There's a pot of gold and the rainbow, too, only you've been digging the wrong end. Oh, Pa. All right, go ahead, only. Find something to sell them card rides here. I hear. And everything's gonna be all right, don't you worry. You know, Branko, we got a lot of riding to do. And you know why? Because I'm gonna enter you in a race. A race who'll win us more money than I ever dreamed of having in a lifetime, a thousand dollars. That'll buy Pa a real fine horse ranch with breeding stock and everything. But he'll ever look down at him again. He'll have a private pasture and a barn that doesn't leak. If there's enough money left over, I may even buy myself a store-bought dress. One with fancy buttons and frills and everything, and I'll go to this dance, and everybody will be looking at me, and I'll just dancing and whirling and round, light as a peacock feather.
He ain't used to nobody except me, Pa. I figured he was up something. Ain't done nothing wrong. Sure got yourself a fine animal. Isn't he, though? I named him Bronca. Isn't he pretty? Yeah, where'd you steal him? I didn't steal him. Caught him three weeks ago. Gentled him myself. Figured on selling him yourself. No, I wasn't going to sell him. Ben Cartwright wanted to buy him, but I wouldn't sell. Don't believe me, you can ask him. Cartwright seen him? Give a hundred dollars for an animal like that. Oh, no, Pa. We've got to keep him, don't you see? Branca could give us everything we've ever wanted, a fine horse ranch and everything. Oh, you and your dreams. You must be touched in the head if you think that one horse is going to give us everything we want. If you can give me everything I want, that's a hundred dollars. No, Pa. you got to listen to me. Don't sass me anymore. Just get a halter on him. Go on, get... You can't be serious, Laughlin. Bet I'm serious, Mr. Cartwright. You told Trudy you wanted to buy this horse. I'm telling you I want to sell him. Well, even if she told you what that horse might mean to both of you? Oh, Trudy always has big dreams, silly dreams. I don't even listen to them. Well, it might be a good idea if you did listen to her dreams sometimes. Maybe you can afford time to listen to that foolishness. I can't afford to turn down $100 for this animal. That's all I'm asking. You want to buy him, or don't you, Mr. Cartwright? The animal's not yours to sell in the first place, is it? I mean, Trudy caught him and broke him. Trudy's a miner. She ain't got no property rights. <laughs> Ain't that the law, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, that's the law. Well, then, we got a deal? No, I, I don't want any part of it. Yeah? All right. Find somebody else to buy him. We'll have no trouble with a fine animal like this one. All right, let's go, girl. Please, buy it, Mr. Cartwright. Somebody's going to anyway, and I'd rather you all had him than anyone else. So you wouldn't be so far away from me. All right, Trudy. I right, come to the house. I'll get you a bill of sale and your money. Sorry about that. Oh, it isn't your fault. Bronco could win that race. I just know it. That's what I was trying to tell Pa, but he wouldn't listen. He's twice the horse in that dumb old Skeeter you're gonna ride. Trudy, you're kind of putting yourself out on a big limb, aren't you, honey? You want to see how fast he can run? Why not? I got Skeeter in a barn. I'm sure I can rustle up an extra saddle. Well, brother, looks to me like you got a race on your hands. One hundred. <laughs> I sure thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Where's Boranka? Boss. Trudy! She ran off with him? She sure did. She left here on the dangest cloud of dust you ever seen. Huh? She and Joe's horse racing. Joe's on skier. Oh, yeah? Hey! Oh, she's beating him! Oh, let's go. Yeah, look at that little gal riding. Great deal to that hole. She beat him seven ways to Sunday. Congratulations, he's a great horse. You take good care of him, won't you? You know I will. That was a good ride. Good ride, Trudy. Tried to tell you, Pa. You wouldn't listen. You cheated me, Cartwright. I ain't gonna forget it. Thanks, you cheated him. 
Won't you give him his money back so Trudy can keep her horse? I could. Walk those horses around real good. Let them cool off before you put them up. Take special care, Baranka. Don't want anything to happen to Trudy's horse now, do it? Benson, ten dollars Baranka. Oh, Benson, you're a biker. <laughs> I'm betting three months' pay, a hundred dollars on Baranka. You put that in your book, Harper. One hundred, even money. Even money? But yesterday you was given three to one odds on yeah. Baranka. That was yesterday. Take it or leave it. No, I'll take it anyway. Timer. They tell me you're the one that sold Baranka to Ben Cartwright. What business is that of yours, mister? Bartender, bring my friend a bottle here. That make it my business? Yeah, it makes it your business. Why'd you sell the horse so cheap? Well, it sure gets around. You're the one that's been spreading it. You've been on quite a drunk, Laughlin. You've been spouting off all over town how Ben Cartwright cheated you. Well, ben Cartwright did cheat me. Well, that's no concern of mine. What does concern me is that Baranka has suddenly become the overwhelming favorite in the stake race. I'm covering an awful lot of money bet on him right now. <laughs> well, my friend, you had better have an awful lot of money to pay off with. Baranka could beat any of those nags running backwards. I saw my daughter ride Baranka against Joe Cartwright Skeeter and beat him by a mile. I tried to hide you. Things just didn't work out for you and me. Don't you worry. Someday I'm going to have lots of money. I'll just buy you back. You really love that horse, don't you, Trudy? I wasn't doing nothing. Well, you're just talking to your horse. Sometimes that's real important doings. I guess I should have asked you folks whether I could come out here. You're welcome anytime. Well, thanks, because that's just fine, because he's the best friend I got. Plan on staying a while, or ain't you afraid your Paul might miss you? Well, Pa's got money in his pocket now, so he's he's down at the saloon every night. Well, look, uh, you and Bronca, go ahead and just have yourself a good visit. I'll, I'll see you after a while. Did you hear that, Bronca? I can come visit you anytime I want, and you won't be lonesome either. And they may let me even ride you. And you gotta admit, that barn's much better than that crowd you were living in up in the hills. We can just pretend that you're my very own. Uh. Oh, oh, what's the matter, Mr. Cartwright? You told him, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I told him, Trudy. Uh, <clears throat> Trudy, we, uh, we have a proposition we'd like to uh, discuss with you, sort of a business deal. Yeah, we just, uh, we just had a meeting. About me? Yes, about you and uh, about uh, Baranka. Yeah, <clears throat> Trudy, how would you like to ride Baranka? In the big race. Yeah, we haven't won that race in a couple of years. What's a catch? Well, uh, yes, there, uh, there is a catch, I must admit to that. If you win the race, Baranka belongs to you. 
Only you don't take legal possession until you're of legal age. And you only get half the prize money when you're of legal age. Have we got a deal? What do you think, Brank? You think we can win that race? Okay, you got yourself a deal. All right, it's a deal. What good's that going to do me? I need money now, girl, now. And Clyde Wright's get all the prize money. If you win, they got a prize winning stallion. Can't you see through that scheme, girl? You're too dumb to understand. Mr. Cartwright said he'd hold half the money for me and sign Bronca back to me. When? Four or five years from now? You swallowed his words. They're just tricking you, gal. You're too dumb to understand, I told you. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't lie to me. It's not like that. It's very important to them. You know Mr. Cartwright and all of them. Why? You got some bets on Brett? <laughs> They betting? How should I know? Maybe I was a little hasty. Riding that horse means a lot to you, don't it? Yeah, it means an awful lot to me. Come on over here, your man. Come on over, I done changed my mind. You got it right. You got a right to enter that race as you got a mind to. You got a right as much as anybody. Mean it? Yeah, if you, if you, if you want anything that strong, I ain't gonna stand in your way, honey. Uh -uh. All I can to help you. Now, wait a minute. Listen to what I got to say. I ain't wasting your time. How much you got on Baranka to win? I've covered close to 7,000. is it worth to you to make sure Baranka loses? Forget it, Laughlin. You can't get to the horse or the Cartwrights. Maybe not. If I can get to my daughter. And Joe Cartwright ain't riding Baranka. My daughter is. Well, now, maybe you ain't wasting my time after all, Mr. Laughlin. <laughs> One of my spasms. <coughs> Comes and goes. <coughs> hey, go away after a little. It's just that I. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to get dressed and go for a doctor. Oh, no, no. <coughs> no, he can't do me any good. I've seen him already. <coughs> That's why I've been drinking so much. What is it? I don't know. It's uh, one of them, <coughs> one of them yard long sawbones names. Is it bad? Rudy, I got about six months to live. Oh, Paul, come and sit down. I know, I know. No use getting excited about it. <coughs> and nothing we can do. Well, there's got to be something we could do. Well, there's this doctor in San Francisco. 
Oh, ain't no use talking about that. It'd take a lot of money. Well, we've got money. There must be something left when we sold Bronca. <coughs> That's not enough money. Take a thousand dollars, operation and all. Well, there's got to be a way. Yeah, there is a way. There's... Oh, no, no. I, I couldn't ask you to do that. Well, what is it? Don't forget it. <coughs> I'd do anything in the world for you, Bob. I could make a deal with this Harper. He'd pay a heap of money if he uh, was sure that Barranco was going to lose the race. You could uh, get him off to a bad start, kind of box him in and Put him in a little... You asking me to give Brank a bad race on purpose? Oh, I know no, it's the wrong thing. It's only a horse race. And <laughs> I am dying. <laughs> I can't do that. I, I can't. Not even to save my life? See how you and Bronk is getting along. Looks to me like he's about as skittish as a as a polecat in a perfume factory. Ain't nothing wrong with him. It looked to me like he's trying to run off with you. Well, he's a wild horse, ain't he? What's the matter, huh? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just tired. So is Bronco. I mean, I gave him a long workout. You have any reason to find fault with us? Why don't you can call him today? That's just what I'm gonna do. You can ride him on into the barn. I'll come in and brush him down and cool him off for you. be thinking about your old pa. Maybe thinking about how he ain't had any dinner yet. Stop looking at me that way. Whiskey's the only thing that eases the pain. <coughs> I had another one of those attacks today. Real terrible this time. I went into town. I had a talk with Doc Martin today. What made you do a thing like that? You checking up on me? He probably lied to you. Told you there was nothing wrong with me. He didn't want to worry you not. Doc didn't lie, Pa. You did. Just like you always have when you wanted to get your own way. But there ain't gonna be any more lies. Leastwise, I ain't gonna hear them. Because I'm leaving for good. Oh, no, Trudy. Wait. You're right, honey. I lied. I admit it. I was wrong. But I didn't lie just for me. I lied for both of us. You... We can still have that ranch you've always wanted. We can have some fine horses, only you've got to stay, Trudy. 
You got to ride in that race. You got to ride Baranca. And you got to lose. I made a deal with Harper. If I cross him, he'll kill me. You understand? He'll kill me. I ain't gonna throw that race, Pa. I made my mind up. But I'll do one last thing. I'll see that Branca isn't even in the race. And that way, Harper won't lose any money and you won't be in any trouble. Oh, honey, that's all I need. That's all I need. I'm not coming back, Pa. Maybe what I want is a dream. Maybe I won't find it. But at least someplace else I'll have a little chance. Cody, honey. Goodbye, Pa. done nothing like this before. I mean, stealing a horse, but you understand, you've got to go back to the hills where, where you belong, where I found you. Morning, she acted real skittery, and she was working out Bronco like she was trying to tie him up or something. And now this. You know, maybe this has something to do with what I was telling you about Harper and Laughlin getting their heads together. Her father just might be pressing her into throwing that race. There's yeah. a lot of money involved. <sighs> yeah, that would make a girl like her act this way. Sure would. All right. Branca's going to run in that race, and he's going to win it. And you're going to ride him. Evening, Mr. Cartwright. I'm looking for Trudy. Figured she must be here. She was here before, Branca. But uh, if she's not at home, I imagine she's off somewhere trying to find some answers to some questions. By what? Answers to what? Oh, answers to some simple questions like uh, what's right and what's wrong. Well, she knows right and wrong, or more me taught her. Did you? Well, now, maybe I wasn't born lucky. Maybe I don't own a big spread the way you do. But that don't give you no call to criticize the way I run my family. I'm not criticizing the way you run your family. And money's got nothing to do with this. I'm just trying to talk to you as one father to another. Well, I've done the best I could. Did you? And why do you think she's turned to that horse the way she has? Huh? Because she's found something to love. Something alive that would return her affection. Do you know why she came here tonight? To try to run that horse back into the hills because she didn't want him to race in a crooked race. All she wanted to do was race Baranka. 
And you managed to ruin even that for her. She ain't going to ride Brack in that race Saturday, huh? No, she's not. My son Joseph is going to ride him. It's getting late. Well, I still don't know where she headed for. You're the only folks that she'd ask anything of. I imagine she's out there somewhere, hoping that you'll find her. Tell her something. Well, tell her what you said. I'll tell her I'm sorry about everything, too. You might uh, try telling her something else. What's that? That you love her. Bartender, give me a quick one there, will you? If it ain't too late, I want to get a bet done. Sure thing, friend. Fifty on Baranka. I wasn't going to bet until they announced a change of riders a few minutes ago. What are you saying, friend? Well, that Laughlin girl ain't going to be riding Baranka after all. Joe Cartwright is. Thank you, friend. People got an awful lot of money in this race. It looks like most of it's being bet on you. I'll do my best. That's the ten-minute gun, gents. The next time I fire it, the race will be on. I was worried. I told you I wasn't coming back. Yeah. yeah, I guess I don't blame you none for that. All I ever thought about was myself. Never really talked to you. Never realized that a young girl like you ever needed anything more than a bunch of scrub horses to talk to. You done the best you could. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. I lied to you over and over. I was... Don't go getting the idea that I'm trying to pull something just to make you forgive me. I realize it's too late for that. But all I want you to do now is to do the right thing. What does that mean? I want you to ride Baranka in that race, and I want you to ride him to win. You said if I rode Bronk in the race and won, Harper would kill you. Don't you recognize another one of my lies? I was just trying to scare you and doing something my way. I know now I was wrong, dead wrong. Cody. Honey. You do want to ride in that race, don't you? Make all them dreams come true. Yeah. I want to do that more than anything else in the world, but little Joe's right. Oh, don't you just go on over them card rights and tell them what I had to say, and you ride Baranka in that race. Now go on, go on, go on, get. Now just, just a minute. There's one thing more I want to tell you. Yeah. What is it? I, I'm, I'm listening. I love you.
trust me, Laughlin. You said your girl would ride. She's gonna ride, Harper. But I crossed you all right. She's gonna ride to win. Maybe you're lying, maybe you ain't. But I always cover my bets. I ain't taking any chances on paying out all that money. All right, boys, we're leaving town. You too, Laughlin. But you won't be going very far. We know it's around the back. We'll get the money box. Let's go. Listen, Mr. Cartwright, I've just got to ride him. I've just got to. Everything's all right now. Uh, he, was, he was lying. Mr. Harper ain't going to kill him if her uncle wins. Uh, so that was it. Please. You better get mounted up. You're going to lose this race before it starts. Come on, give me that jacket. All right, gents. And girls. Let's have a good start. At least I got to see the start of the race. She's way out in front. All right, let, let's get it over with. You know, imagine a fellow like Lawford lying to the moon, daughter. Pour me a drink, man. Time the race is over, we'll be long gone. Stop, oh, man. Stop, I want to talk to you, but look out, Ben! Come on, get over here. They was gonna kill me, Ben. I think you knew that when you sent Trudy looking for us a couple of minutes ago. Another one of my lies. Yeah, only this time it was a lie with a difference. You did it for her sake, didn't you? I'm gonna have to get to the doctor and stop this. No, not yet. Please, Ben. I want to see the end of the race. I want to see my little girl. I'll be all right. <laughs> get them over to the sheriff.
Gertrude. Lovelyn? Lovelyn? How do you feel? Oh, fine. Oh, hey. What's the matter, Trudy? Looks like she's lost her last friend. Yeah. Well, she just about did, hoss. Frank could jump that fence last night. Trudy? Trudy, we're sorry we just heard about Veronica. Yeah, he uh, went back to the hills. He's wild again. The three of us could go out and look for him. Might find yeah. him. Could do that. If he loves to run free better than he likes me, then uh, that's what I want for him. Judy. his whole harem with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a study of horse ranch. <laughs> 